These are the sights and sounds of our coastal wetlands. Tidal wetlands are thriving ecosystems, supporting rich and diverse fish and wildlife communities. They also provide popular recreational opportunities for people. But it was not always this way. Until the 1900s, our coastal wetlands were wild, undeveloped wilderness covering thousands of acres. In those days, wetlands were simply known as swamps that bred disease-carrying mosquitoes, and we filled them in with dirt to reclaim the land. We didn't know then what valuable resources we were destroying. Unlike our eastern broad coastal plains, Southern California has steep, rugged creeks and rivers that plunge quickly to the shoreline. And that produces smaller, more isolated wetlands. In addition, we've destroyed more than 90% of the wetlands that were here 150 years ago. And that means we've lost all the associated functions and values that come along with healthy coastal wetlands. When periodic El Nino storms every, say, 7 to 11 years hit us here in Southern California, these wetlands act as shock absorbers and take out the worst bite from these storms and moderate the flood flows, just like a big reservoir would do on land. Degraded wetlands, like Biona and others, will not provide such benefits without a comprehensive restoration. We need that restoration to connect the ocean to the wetland to the land. The importance of coastal wetlands to the marine ecosystem cannot be overestimated. This is the place where detritus and sediments and nutrients come down from the land, from the mountains, get deposited in the wetlands, and are then recycled for benthic invertebrates, for birds, for fish, and ultimately for humans. Through our Coastal Conservancy Agency, Californians have reclaimed thousands of acres of wetlands along our coast since the 1970s, when the Coastal Act was first voted into existence. It's an incredible success story for we the people. Ironically, two of the most visible degraded wetlands will be among the last to be restored at Biona and Malibu. It's often said when restoring an ecosystem you first have to save all the parts, and that's what we've done here. The first step was to come in and salvage all of the really nice vegetation that we had on the surface of the soil. We had our plant growing contractor come in and scrape off and take big mats of salt marsh vegetation and take it back to their nursery for growing. Then we've come in and removed all of the unnatural fill that uh, has been choking this wetland. The approach we're using is to use lots of heavy equipment because we don't want to drag this out. What we want to do is get in, get rid of the soil that's been deposited unnaturally, re-sculpt the land so it functions properly, and then get out again. We're expecting that within two to three years you'll be able to come in and you won't even know that we did the project. We're trying to create little microhabitats in it as was designed for, and that'll allow water to stay in there and you'll get different moisture levels, different salinity levels, which will be preferred by different types and more varying types of vegetation which will be preferred by different types of bugs. The more birds will be here to eat those bugs. A much more diverse ecology in the system is what we're shooting for. Where birds and fish will have a lot to, to forage on, where individual people will be able to come and see these wildlife species and enjoy this wonderful ecosystem. Last year alone, over 7,000 visitors came through the Biona wetlands as part of the Friends Education and Restoration programs, 5,000 of which were children. Many of these kids have never left their neighborhoods, let alone visited a natural habitat area. We teach them environmental awareness, and oftentimes they spend a morning removing invasive weeds from a small area here in the dunes. Just this small volunteer effort over the past two decades, restoring precious habitat, has brought back the endangered El Segundo blue butterfly. Imagine what we could do with all 600 acres of Biona restored. In the 1960s, Marina del Rey construction not only converted a large part of the Biona wetlands to marina, but dumped dirt on another 200 acres of wetlands, burying it completely. Today, the degraded wetland supports mostly invasive weeds. Whatever final plan emerges for the Biona restoration, it must remove all this dump dredge material and restore a productive tidal marsh. Taxpayers spent $120 million purchasing this land, and it would be a terrible waste to leave it in this condition. Whether we restore a large open water area or just tidal channels, a lot of dirt has to be moved, and you can't do it by hand. Mechanized excavation and regrading has been proven at so many restoration projects, it would be foolhardy to use any other method. The time to take appropriate corrective action is now. For the sake of migratory birds, 
for the sake of local wildlife species and the intricate ecosystems that support them. More wimbrels just came in. And for the benefit of we the people, as wise stewards of the land that we're fortunate to inhabit.